let's get right into it. One of the most intuitive ideas we'll come across in statistics is formalized in a law of large numbers. The basic idea is that as you take samples from a probability distribution, the average of all the samples gets closer and closer to the actual mean of the distribution. Ignoring any real-world considerations with a sample and assuming it's completely random, as we continue to take samples, you can see that slowly the mean of all our samples, i.e. the mean of the sampling distribution, converges to the actual population mean. We all have this intuitive idea that as you collect more samples, your estimations get more and more accurate. The law of large numbers is essentially this idea made mathematically rigorous. However, there's actually a bit more nuance with this idea than you may initially realize. This is captured in the fact that there's actually two versions of the law of large numbers, strong and weak. Going through the differences of these laws also reveals two interesting concepts. What means for something to converge to probability, and what probability of one actually means in statistics. Starting with the weak law, it states that the mean of the sample will converge in probability to the expected value of its respective probability distribution as the number of samples goes to infinity. This is shown in the following statement. On first glance, this might look like a bunch of math gibberish, but let's break it down. First, this limit notation at the start refers to how we are considering a scenario where we continue to take more and more samples to see the convergence to the population expected value. In this case, n represents the number of samples. Next, PR means the probability of, and the term on the left side of the inequality represents the magnitude of the difference between the sample mean and the population mean essentially how far away the sample mean is from being the population mean. This epsilon symbol on the right may be new to you, but it's actually just a variable that in this context can be any positive number, that is epsilon is greater than zero. Typically when you see it, you can imagine it as an infinitesimally small value like one with 20 zeros in front, but smaller. So bringing that all together, this notation refers to the probability that the difference between the sample mean and the population mean is less than an infinitesimally small value, epsilon. In Lehman's terms, this basically means the probability that the sample mean and the probability mean are within some small margin of each other. Finally, the full definition can be read as the limit as the number of samples goes to infinity of the probability that the absolute difference between the sample mean and the population mean is less than an infinitesimally small value, or any positive number, is equal to 1. From this extremely wordy description, we can see our initial intuitive idea of this principle pop out. Essentially, we're saying that as we continue to take a very large number of samples, the probability that the average of these samples and the true mean of the entire population are equal to each other becomes almost certain. We'll see this notion of converging probability a lot in statistics, so what does it actually mean? In short, it means that as a sequence of events progresses, a certain outcome becomes more and more likely. On the flip side, it means that abnormal events become less likely to occur. Outside of the weak law of large numbers, you also see this idea when discussing consistent estimators. In this case, an estimator is called consistent if, as you use more data points with the estimator, the estimate converges in probability to the true value of the parameter being estimated. The important distinction to make is that convergence to probability does not necessarily imply convergence to the actual value. So even with an infinite number of samples, there is an infinitesimally small chance that the sample mean and the population mean are different. If you want to prove a converge to the actual sample mean, then you need to look at the strong law of large numbers. It states that as you take more samples up to infinity, the sample mean almost surely equals the population mean, as a mathematical statement is written as the following. Breaking this down, we see the probability of notation again. The limit on the left side of the equation refers to the sample mean, as an infinite number of samples are taken. On the right side of the inner equation, the mu symbol represents the population mean. So altogether, the statement is saying that the probability of the sample mean, when the number of samples goes to infinity, equaling the population mean, is equal to 1. As you can see, we are making a much stronger statement on the convergence of the sample mean compared to the weak law. Rather than saying it's extremely likely the difference between the sample mean and the population mean is infinitesimally small, with an infinite number of samples, we are saying that the sample mean with an infinite number of samples will certainly equals the population mean. Now I'll admit, I've danced around the notion of the probability of an event being 1 a bit in both of these definitions, so I'll ask the question, does having a probability of 1 mean an event will undoubtedly happen? Well, not quite. Usually when an event has a probability of 1, it's referred to as being almost surely to happen. Now we're starting to get into some graduate level measure theory, so to avoid that, let's imagine a scenario where you can pick any number from the set, 0 to 100. What's the probability that you pick an integer? Mind you that all real numbers are allowed. 
Given that, the probability of picking an integer would actually be zero, because there are infinitely many more transcendental numbers comparatively. And likewise, the probability of picking a transcendental number, like pi, would be equal to one. Now you intuitively know that it's still possible to pick an integer in this scenario, but given that we are picking from an infinite set, the probability of picking one is infinitesimally small. This gives you the intuition behind what a probability of one means, where there's essentially an infinitesimally small chance of it not occurring. There's also the reason why we cannot say that even stronger statement that as the number of samples goes to infinity, the sample mean equals the population mean, but there's still that extremely small chance that it may not, hence we have to talk about the probability of the event being one. With that, you now have a fairly rigorous understanding of the law of large numbers and its two primary versions. In this video, we also cover what it means for something convergent probability, and what it means for something to have a probability of zero or one. While the differences between both laws seem fairly minute, and in practice they essentially are, it does still reveal a lot of the extra complexity that comes with making something mathematically rigorous. Ultimately, the main reason there are two versions of the law of large numbers in the first place is that there are just a few cases where only the weak law applies. But do know that if the strong law applies, then that implies that the weak law does as well. There are a couple more specialized versions out there, in particular I'd like to cover Borel's law of large numbers in a future video, as it makes some of the intuitive notions about probabilities rigorous. As always, if you want to learn more about any of the topics I've covered in this video, I've included more links below, as well as resources for further study and for practice.